Pogo here, and welcome to the first episode of the Survival Games uh, mini-series. Now, I know that this has been a long time coming. I've been getting comments about making a series like this for a long, long time. Uh, so now we're finally going to go ahead and get started. By the end of this series, we will have a fully functioning Survival Games plugin uh, that will be coded from scratch. I'm not going to I might have done this in other videos where I just borrow code from other episodes and just tell you to go watch the videos, but we're going to do this all from scratch. It's going to be a little bit different than some of the other mini games, uh, just because of the nature of survival games, and then also I'm going to try to improve upon um, the ideas that I introduced in some of my other series. Uh, so if you have watched my other mini series videos, this is going to be pretty similar, um, but this will obviously cover things specific to survival games, and I also hope to improve... Um, upon some of the things that I did in the other uh, videos. Uh, the name of the plugin, I'm going to call it Bloodbath, which uh, in survival games, I think that's the initial right after the bell rings and everyone goes for the uh, cornucopia in the middle and they all fight each other for the best supplies. I think that's what the Bloodbath is. So I figured rather than call it survival games and give it a boring name, I would try something a little bit more exciting. So. That's the name of the plugin that we're going to do, and we're going to make a survival games plugin. So the first thing that we're going to do to set up is to write um, the settings manager class. Now, I know that we've done this probably five times, uh, and you might want to skip this video, uh, but there is one thing that we're going to do. We're actually going to write support to have um, multiple settings. I don't think I've done this in any other video, but the way that we write the class will allow you to instantiate the settings manager class so that we can have more than one file to store the information. So let's go ahead and make um, the settings manager class. <clears throat> oh, and then also I should probably add bucket to my craft, my uh, class path. So that would be bucket server testing server, bucket coding testing server, and then there's craft bucket. Cool. Um, Alright, so now let's go ahead and declare uh, the instance variables, we'll say a public private file file and our private file configuration config and we will give it a second java.io.file and then also let's go ahead and make our main class which I'm just gonna call main uh, because it just stands out a little bit better. And then just to make things really easy for us, I'm going to make um, a get plugin method um, that will all it will do is return bucket dot get server dot get plugin manager dot get plugin um, bloodbath. Probably styles it like that. So that I can easily get access to the plugin. This is good for like if you have a schedule and you want to schedule scheduler and you want to schedule tasks or anything else that you want with the plugin. Just a really easy you can just say main dot get plugin and it's really easy and it will definitely be uh, helpful. It's just nice and simple. And if you do decide that you want to change it, if you want to have like an instance variable that you instantiate and on enable or something like that, you could change it like that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and create a private constructor uh, for the settings manager and this one's going to take in a string which we'll call file name. The way that this is going to work is we're going to instantiate all of the settings managers within the settings manager class and it's sort of going to be like a singleton except it'll have multiple instances. Um, for now all we need is one uh, config file for just regular configuration stuff and then one file for all of the arenas. Um, so let's just go ahead and write all of the methods first and then we'll get to that. So we're going to say um, File is equal to new file, which would be main dot get plugin dot get um, what was it called? Get data folder. It's right there. Uh, so it's going to be in the data folder, and then the name is going to be file file name, and then dot yml. So if I say the file name is config, it'll be in the data folder, and then config dot yml. So then we want to say um, if not file exists, if the file does not exist, 
then file.create new file, which is going to throw an exception. Okay. So we need to put that in a try and catch. Now I'm going to be lazy and just um, have it print the stack trace, but you could also print out a message that says um, could not create new file. Then we're going to say config is equal to yaml configuration.load configuration, and then the file would obviously just be file. So now we load up this file right here, this file object, and then we load up the uh, configuration, the file configuration object. So now let's go ahead and write uh, a couple of methods. So we're going to have a um, method that has generics. Um, if you don't really understand this, which you might not, go watch my Java 101 video on generics. Um, it's actually pretty interesting. It's one of my favorite concepts in Java. And also, if you don't understand this, this method declaration will look a little bit confusing. Uh, but we're going to give it the type parameter t, um, public t, t, um, get for string path, return t, config dot get path. So we're essentially just wrapping this, um, the get method. Um, we're just wrapping all these, like the get and the set methods, we're just wrapping them. Instead of having a get config that returns this config, we're just um, making it a little bit nicer. So then we'll have a public void set, string path, um, string, actually it would be object, object, and we'll say config.set path, and that would, I should call that value, because it's a um, path, and then value. So we have our set. We'll go ahead and write a public boolean contains string path return config dot contains um, path. You know, these are just, we're basically just wrapping all these. And then we also want a public uh, configuration section um, create section string or path, I guess. Return config dot create section. Uh, you know we need to have this because <clears throat> create section is its own method. You can't like set something to be a new configuration section. So uh, we have our get method, our set method, our contains, and our create section. We might actually end up going back in here and you know adding more methods if we need to. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and actually write our singletons. Um, so obviously this has a constructor, so we're going to um, instantiate them. So we're going to say um, private final settings manager config is equal to new settings manager config. And then we'll also do a um, arenas is equal to new settings manager. Um, and then this will be for arenas. So we have our, oh, and I guess I can't call that config. Um, I'll just call it configuration. So we have our configuration, which is for config, and arenas, which is for arena. So we've just instantiated two settings managers, and we give the name of the file in each one. So this enables us to have multiple settings managers. Then we want to go ahead and have a public static um, settings manager get config return configuration and then we want our public static settings manager um, get arenas which will return arenas and oh these should be static okay so now just to quickly show you how this will work if you use one of the other settings managers you would probably do settings uh, manager dot get instance, but in this case you do get arenas or get config. So if you want to get access to the configuration file, you do get config. If you want access to the arenas file, you do get arenas. These both return a settings manager, so they both work the exact exact same way, except that they have different files. So that's all for this video. It is certainly the least exciting video probably for this series. Uh, we just needed a settings manager and I figured I might as well try to do one a little bit better than I had done it before. Um, Coming up, we have to, you know, do the uh, arena class with the arena manager. We have to work out a whole command system. Uh, there's a bunch of listeners, and then there's going to be uh, still a lot of work to do. Uh, but in the end, we will have an awesome uh, survival games 
uh, plugin. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you're excited. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I will see you guys soon with some more um, coding videos. Bye, guys.